Worship as we hear the prelude this morning from uh, Teen Challenge. Good morning. It's good to see all of you here this morning, and we send a special welcome to Teens for Christ this morning, who's providing our service this morning. I have a, a few announcements I want to make 
Um, after following the service today, uh, you're all invited into the gathering place, and we're going to have a time of fellowship with our brothers here this morning with uh, Teen Challenge. Also, I want to say that we are taking up a free will offering uh, for Teen Challenge. The offering plates will be uh, in the gathering place. Um, we will have our regular offering here this morning, but I also want you to know that there's going to be a, a free will offering for the ministry of, of, of Teen Challenge. And the, um, the plates will be uh, in the gathering place, plates this morning. Um, a few announcements in your bulletins. Uh, for our prayer, prayer concerns, the names are listed here this morning on um, the bottom of your bulletin for uh, prayer concerns. And also in your bulletins, you'll see this week that we're praying for Drexel Hill Church of the Brethren near, near Philadelphia. That's the church of the district that we're praying for. And the Skip, Skip Act Church of the Brethren is praying for us. Uh, one other announcement, we had a death in the church uh, this past week. Um, Catherine Miller, a uh, longtime member here, has uh, passed away this week. And um, the funeral for Catherine will be at the, um, the funeral home here in Myerstown. It's going to be Tuesday at 11 a.m. Tuesday, 11 a.m. is the service, the funeral service for Catherine Miller. The uh, visitation is at 10 o'clock at Grossman uh, Funeral Home. So we hope that you can make it up for that. If you'll notice in your announcements in the order of service today, I want to, I want to change things around a little bit. We are having a prayer of consecration for our National Youth Conference, once we're going to National Youth Conference, uh, they're going to be leaving this Saturday, so we want to send them off. Um, and then we're going to do that following our announcements here. I'm going to have those who are going to National Youth Conference and uh, advisors to come forward, and I'll ask the deacons to uh, come up too, and we're just going to have a, a short prayer of consecration for that. And then following that then, um, we're going to have our offering, our offertory thought. So but let's uh, start out with our a prayer this morning for a time of worship. Let us pray. God, I want to thank you and praise you for your mercy and for your love, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us this privilege of worshiping you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for... Uh, the ministry of uh, Teen Challenge, who's here this morning. Thank you, Lord, how you are using these uh, these men in ministry. We pray your blessings as they uh, give us uh, this time of worship that Lord Jesus would be glorified in all that we say and do. And we thank you for um, this time of worship. We pray that you would open up our hearts and minds uh, in the leading of your Holy Spirit. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This time I'm going to ask um, those who are going to National Youth Conference, uh, youth and adults, uh, to come forward. All right, we have two, uh, two youth that are going here, uh, Weston and, and Kate, and we're glad that this is an opportunity for you. This, this is a golden opportunity to go to National Youth Conference. Um, for those of, of us who've been there, we can share our stories of what that's like, but it, it is a very important time. And as we have this consecration time, I, I want to emphasize the importance of, of really looking at this as an opportunity for growth, growth in your spiritual life. And as you go, um, just go um, asking God for wisdom and guidance and you know, how, how um, you're to be led. Um, there's going to be some really uh, good speakers, I'm sure, uh, good insight sessions and activities. Uh, we, we want you to know that our prayers are with you as you go. And uh, this time I ask the deacons to come forward too as we have a time of laying on of hands. And you can all kneel down if you're able to. And let us pray. God, we want to thank you for 
opportunities that you give us, for doors that are open, for opportunities to grow. Grow in your ways, Lord. Grow in your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you for uh, Weston and Kate who um, are going to National Youth Conference. Lord, thank you for that opportunity uh, that you give them. Uh, also, Lord, for uh, these adult advisors, Lord, we thank you for their dedication and going, uh, going along. And God, we just pray, Lord, that uh, we consecrate them this morning, Lord, in, in, your, in your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would send them out. Uh, Lord, um, they go, these, all these go, Lord, with our blessings as a church. We pray that you would give um, um, Kate and Weston wisdom, wisdom to know, Lord, that what is from God and what is from man. And Lord, that they would choose, Lord, uh, your ways and that this would be just a growing um, opportunity for them. We pray for safe traveling mercies as they travel out there, Lord. Um, that you would be with them and, and the rest of them as well. We give you, Lord, all the praise, honor, and glory, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. <laughs> time we'll have our, our offering. Jesus tells us to lay out for ourselves treasures in heaven. Uh, we want this time of giving our offerings to be a time where we give our treasures to God. And so let us uh, pray before we give these offerings. God, we thank you and praise you for your church and for the ministry that you have entrusted us to. We pray, O oh God, that you bless these offerings that we give to you, Lord, that we would always have a heart uh, to give to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The ashes can come forward as we have our morning offering. This time I'll turn it over to uh, Teen Challenge. They're going to uh, do the remainder of the service this morning.
only the, the grace of God that uh, we are here. Thank God for His grace. And uh, anyway, we are the choir from uh, Pennsylvania now, but we've changed the name. Instead of for years, we were called the Teen Challenge Training Center. Now, the name change is the Pennsylvania Adult and Teen Challenge Center. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why later on, why we just changed that name. So anyway, we're supposed to be a choir, but we're a little short-handed this morning. Sorry. <laughs> I guess it's four of us. What do you call that, a quartet, right? <laughs> anyway, we're delighted to be with you. We're just from 12 miles down the road, and uh, we're so glad to be here. And just hope that we can be a blessing in some way, some song, something that we share. But uh, before we continue singing, we'd like to tell you our names and tell you where we're from. And uh, we all live right there at the center. Uh, my name is Bob Costanza, and I've been uh, with the choir for 28 years now. And I'm originally from Queens, New York. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael, and I'm from Hershey, PA. Yeah. Good morning, my name is Don. I'm also from New York City. Good morning, I'm Jason from Philadelphia. And Chris is running the sound. Chris, just turn around and wave to them and say that. Chris, go ahead and tell them, tell them where you're from. North Carolina. Yes. <laughs> and Jonathan is the newest member of the choir. Jonathan, tell the folks where you're from. Surprise, Arizona. Arizona. It's a long way away, huh? And uh, he's just starting to learn songs, and that's why he's not up here. But anyway, we're glad that he could be uh, part of the choir, too. And, uh, you know, the choir changes slowly just about every every month. We, we have a new, we have a graduation the last Friday of every month, and we have an incoming class every month. So there's kind of a slow changeover. And uh, anyway, well, we want to sing and just, uh, uh, just uh, praise the Lord because of what he's done in our lives. He's done a miracle, an absolute, absolute miracle, where a man said there was no hope, there is hope in Jesus. And that's why we're here.
said earlier, my name is Michael. I'm from Hershey, PA, and um, currently I'm 21. Um, I grew up for the first 14 years of my life in Ephraim, PA, and then I moved up to Hershey about seven years ago. Um, my story starts out, before I was born, my dad left me and my mom, and when I was born, I was sitting for my, my whole family for about four weeks, and by the grace of God, when I was found, I was malnourished and pretty much on the edge of death, but my grandparents stepped in and didn't take care of me ever since I was four weeks old. Um, so with that being said, growing up, I grew up like a normal kid, I felt a lot of love, but I always knew there was something missing. Knowing that I was adopted and not living with my real parents growing up, and having an older brother who's two years older, and I have two younger sisters who I believe are 19 and 16, but um, it's just because I don't, I don't have a good relationship with my, with my mom now, and I don't really talk to them. I, the most person, the most that I talk to is my brother, and that's just because he's my brother, so I'm going to talk to him. But um, growing up, like I said, with that piece missing from my life, like my grandparents showed me a lot of love, but knowing that um, I was adopted at a very young age, it took a toll on me. And Growing up, since I'm adopted by my grandparents, now technically through the court of law, my real mom is now my sister. So, since my grandparents, is her, it's my mom's daughter, so she always came around for uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, those kinds of things. So, it was always, and even now, it's still that elephant in the room that no one ever talks about, you know what I mean? I still, to this day, don't know why. Honestly, by the grace of God, I've come to terms with it and Teen Challenge, and I really, at this point, I really don't care why, because I know that God had His hand in it, and if, I, and if it wasn't for Him and my grandparents um, stepping up to the plate, I wouldn't be here. Um, but growing up, I grew up in a Pentecostal church. My uncle was actually a preacher at Man of God Assembly of God in uh, Harrisburg. So, growing up, I went to church every Sunday, every Sunday night, Wednesday night, Friday nights. So, before I really got into drugs, I always told people I had a different kind of drug problem. I was always drugged to church. Um, so, uh, when I moved from Ephrata when I was 14 up to Hershey, Lower Dolphin High School, um, I played soccer my whole life and I wanted to fit in. So, being the new kid playing sports, um, I got into what the soccer kids were doing. And so, I got mixed into drinking alcohol and smoking marijuana on the weekends. And unfortunately for me, that was never enough. It became an everyday thing going to school. Before school, during school, right after school, right before practice, it just became my routine. So, now fast track to my senior year, we had a states run, and I failed a drug test, and I was actually kicked off the soccer team um, my senior year. So I wasn't able to participate in um, the, the banquets and stuff like that, and I never, never got my letter. After I graduated, I graduated in 2015. That night I tried cocaine for the first time. Absolutely fell in love with it. Um, and that took me down a road that I really wasn't prepared for. Um, that whole summer of 2015, I was just ripping and running, doing my thing. Um, fast track to 2016, um, I came homeless for the first time. Um, and then I got this really good offer in a house and I couldn't pass it up. So I got a three bedroom house, I had two roommates, and we were making it work. But unfortunately, the fall of 2016, I got introduced to heroin for the first time, and that took me down a road that still haunts me. But, um, so about six months later, I lost, lost, my, uh, lost my house, then about two months later, actually last year around this time, I lost my car, and then I became homeless. I was doing what I could to get around. I was going into stores, washing my hair at sinks, just trying to take like bird baths trying to do what I could do, stealing food, just doing what I had to do to, to survive. Um, by the grace of God, September 24th was the last night I got high. Um, I remember that night I was coming down off the drugs and I just, I cried out to God and I said, something's gotta change, because I was tired. I was, I'm 6'1", at the time I was 145 pounds. So I was a lot skinnier than I am now, but I was I was so sick from the drugs. I was I was I wasn't eating for a, a while, and at that point I was just throwing up stomach acid. There was nothing coming up, nothing in my stomach. I was losing weight every day. 
Um, so September 24th, the last time I got high, like I said, I remember crying out to God, like something's got to change. And I remember going on my friend's phone and messaging my mom on Facebook, and I said, Mom, I need to come home. She didn't answer because at this point I haven't talked to her for almost a year. But um, the next day, September 25th, I showed up at my parents' doorstep, 6'1", 145 pounds. My mom opened the door, saw that it was me, I had to do a double take to make sure it was me. And then she came out, gave me a hug, started crying, she said, welcome home. Um, for the first time in my life, I felt like that I was actually home. Um, that day, I we went to the hospital to check out get myself checked out because I, I've been, I haven't been eating and everything like that. Put me on an antibiotic and um, then later that day I agreed to come into Teen Challenge. Um, I came into Teen Challenge September 28th, 2017 and my original plan was, my parents' stipulations were that I had to do at least 30 days to be part of the family again. And being, being young and dumb I guess, I wanted to do the 30 days, and I wanted to get my weight up, I wanted to get my veins back, and I wanted to go right back out and use. That was my original plan, going into 30 days and coming right back out and using again. Um, by the grace of God, I came in the 28th, and I think it was October 1st. It was that Monday after the 28th, I don't know what the day was. But um, I put out a Gideon's fleece, and God got a hold of me, and I asked three different people what, if they think I should stay for long term. And each one of them said yes. So I went to the long-term program, which at the time was a 10-month program, now it got changed into an 8-month program. And I've been there ever since. So I've been at the center now for nine and a half months, and I actually graduated in 12 days. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, but with that being said, I'd like to thank everybody here for having us here. I'd like to thank everybody on the choir, because these guys up here, man, there's a lot of love at the center. And I don't wish anybody to go there, but if you got a, if you got a drug problem, you got a loved one who needs, needs help, it's the place to be. I've never felt I've never felt this type of love anywhere in my life, from the streets, from my friends, and not to be funny, out there it was like I like you because I can get something from you, and you can get something from me, and we can benefit from each other. But these guys here, all I can benefit from is their time, and that's all I need: their time and their genuine friend, general and their general friendship. But I'd like to thank you guys for letting, allowing us to come to this church and thank you for letting me share and I hope you enjoy the rest of what we have for you.
um, a little bit about the history of, of uh, Pennsylvania Adult and Teen Challenge and some of the new things that are going on now. Uh, but um, uh, perhaps you have, how many of you have ever seen the movie The Cross and the Switchblade? Right, some of you have, and maybe anyone ever see uh, Nikki Cruz live and hear his uh, testimony? Okay, maybe one or, one or two have. But anyway, Teen Challenge was uh, the, uh, what has been called for many years. Actually, there are many centers that are still called Teen Challenge, but we have changed the name of our, of our center. And uh, the reason we, ch we made the name change is, uh, well, I've been uh, traveling for 28 ye years now in 42 states in Canada. And uh, sometimes after we do our program, someone will ask me, why, why you, are you called Teen Challenge and I don't see any teenagers up there? Well, sometimes we do have a teenager and you can be 18 and be a part of the center uh, that uh, is there down there in Raresburg. And, uh, but anyway, uh, when David Wilkerson first founded the, uh, the ministry of, uh, uh, of Teen Challenge, he was a uh, pastor in church in Phillipsburg and uh, Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania, and uh, God inspired him to come to New York. He read, an, he read an article in Life magazine about seven teenage boys on trial for a gang-related murder. They were all involved in a gang. And uh, as he read the story and looked at the faces of those boys, he felt that God spoke to him and said, why don't you go to New York and bring a message of the love of Christ to those boys. And he kept hearing that voice, that inner voice. And uh, so he so he did. And so when David Wilkerson first, um, uh, when, when he came to New York, he came to uh, get involved with the teenagers, the teenage gangs and drug addicts of Brooklyn. And well, really, of the New York, New York City. But that's where he came originally to Brooklyn. And uh, so he, his uh, ministry was geared to teenagers way back then. And, uh, but as the years have gone by, unfortunately, I think we all know that, that uh, people of all ages and all walks of life have gotten involved in, in drugs. And so that, so that is why uh, we, we have uh, most of the uh, Teen Challenge centers around the country have opened their doors to people of all ages. And so, uh, and now we, we do have centers that are just for adolescents, ages 13 to 17, but in most of the centers around the country, uh, and there are over 200 uh, Teen Challenge centers, you could be 18 and come to, the, come to one of the centers. And, uh, but we have adults of uh, all ages, of any age. We can, I've had, I think the oldest person that was ever on the choir was 60. And uh, so anyway, just wanted to share that with you. That's why the name change. And we also have uh, centers that are for women as well as for men. We have a number of centers for women that are around the country. And uh, the closest one is probably in New York, in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, New York. And that's where the first center was founded. Uh, and they have, uh, they, have a, uh, they have a program there for men and a program for women. But of course, they're not, they're not co-ed, right? <laughs> that would present a whole other set of problems. They're separate, but, they, uh, but they're all there. And uh, we have, there's a couple of other centers I know that, uh, that have, there's one out in Iowa that has a center for men, for men and a center for women. And others, most of them are, 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 e are either just uh, for uh, separate for men and for women. But anyway, thank God that we can open doors to uh, men and women, and young, young men and young women, teenagers, thank God for that. But anyway, this was uh, David Wilkerson, founded the program. Uh, this is the story where it all started. And he founded the program uh, as a result of what happened here in Brooklyn in 1958. And uh, all I'll say is that if you are not familiar with the story, I hope you can purchase the, uh, either, the, either the movie or the book. We have the book called The Cross of the Swift Blade. It's tremendous. 
tremendous story. It's, and it's all true. Uh, of course, the book is in much more detail, but, um, uh, but in, the, in, the, in the movie, uh, Pat Boone plays the part of David Orbison, and Eric Estrada, who, when he was a young actor, plays the part of Nicky Cruz. And I, I know you will, you will be blessed. I know, I know you'll be blessed. You know, sometimes when we, when we watch a movie, uh, at the beginning of the movie, a caption will come on that says, uh, based on a true story. Well, this is more than based on a true story. It is a true story. And it's uh, powerful. And the conversion of Nicky Cruz, who was the leader of one of the most notorious gangs at that time in Brooklyn, his conversion was nothing short of a miracle. And this is a DVD called Run, Baby, Run. And Nicky shares his own story. Uh, shares it. And, and so anyway, uh, I know you certainly will be, will be blessed if you can purchase a copy or something like that. Now, uh, two of the things that are new that the uh, center here in Raresburg uh, have been uh, going on for about a year now, uh, we have founded the first uh, detox center in, in, any, in any teen challenge. And we've uh, founded that because um, usually when an individual calls us and they would like to come into our uh, facilities, and into our program, we have to direct them to a detox, which is usually a hospital, because most of them are really, you know, tanked up on something. And so uh, it's usually a seven-day process. And but now we have, since we have started a detox program right there, it's in one of the wings of the of the facility. Uh, when they call, we can uh, invite them to come right to our program and go to the detox that that we have, and we have, we have to hire a doctor for that, and we also have some nurses there as well, and so it's a whole other, whole other thing, and uh, so anyway, we're, we're glad that we were able to do that, and also we have founded the first 30-day uh, uh, program, we call it our short-term program, and uh, one of the reasons we have founded that was because uh, uh, we wanted to to be able to provide uh, another means for someone to come into the program rather than uh, just uh, usually an individual will come, will come to an induction center first, we, and we have induction centers all around the country. That's a four month process. And then after graduating that phase, they can come to our long term program. And uh, But anyway, sometimes, uh, well, often actually, individuals there kind of uh, discouraged by uh, committing themselves to four months. And so now we have a 30-day um, program, and so that's a little easier for them to commit themselves to. And when they come to our 30-day program, we encourage them to go on to the long-term uh, program. And I, I think almost 50% that come to the short-term program uh, move move on to the long-term program and so we're really thankful for that and uh, so anyway just a couple of new things that uh, that we found to try to encourage individuals to come and uh, bring help to them and uh, uh, we have some CDs of the choir we have three they're all studio quality we, we work, work really hard on these CDs and they're recorded professionally and there's uh, uh, and it's, there's quite a large choir on the CDs than you see here. But anyway, it's all good, uplifting music. We have uh, a shirt call that says, Never Going Back. And that was our theme song for quite a while. And uh, that is our goal, to never go back and never return. You know, Jude, there's a scripture reference that's on the shirt that says, Jude 24 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. And that is our goal, to never return. And, and we, we want to keep focused and keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus. So anyway, that's a great thing. You can purchase one of our shirts. Um, were, you, were, were you able to get something? Yes? Okay, good. Uh, we're going to show you a little PowerPoint and a testimony. And uh, I think you'll enjoy this, and you will see Chris McFadden, who is our uh, president there of the center. So.
Hello, my name is Chris McFadden and I'm President and CEO of Pennsylvania Adult and Teen Challenge. This past year we launched Project 80, a plan to expand our range of services. While our program has been shown by third-party audits to be very successful, prior to Project 80 our program was only able to meet the needs of two out of every ten calls that we received. We wanted to do more. By adding medical detox and an inpatient 30-day program to our 12-month faith-based discipleship program, we are now able to provide options to many more candidates looking for help. This past year, we helped over 1,160 people who needed a second chance at life, free from addiction. Our purpose is to see men and women find freedom from the grip of addiction and enjoy life in all of its fullness through faith in Christ. They have a future that is worth fighting for. We need your prayers and support to help us to continue to see lives and their families transformed. I want to invite you to become a monthly challenge partner with a recurring gift of $10 or more a month. These monthly gifts are vital because they help us plan ahead and provide much needed support for the work we do at Pennsylvania Adult and Teen Challenge. Please talk to one of our representatives today about this vitally important partnership opportunity. If you or someone you love needs help with addiction, contact us. Together, we are bringing wholeness to the hopeless. My sister told me that she was praying for me and uh, she was really afraid for my life, that I was going to lose my life in this process of, of drug use. While she was praying, God gave her a very clear vision. It was a vision of God standing as a, as a father with me on his shoulder. I was kicking and screaming, but God is very calm and he's holding me with one arm and he's just walking. So my sister interpreted that as, don't worry, he's going to be okay. I'm gonna get him where he needs to go. It was like the first glimmer that not everybody had given up on me, that there was still hope. And that was reassuring. My sister asked me the one question that I had been like running away from my whole life. And she looked at me and said, uh, Jacob, what are you so afraid of? And I said, I'm afraid of everything. He was asking me to trust him. He was asking me to have faith that his plan for my life was better than my plan for my life. so much for helping us out. Thank you. And uh, Chris, you, you saw Chris uh, McFadden, he, uh, he kind of embellished on what I was share, sharing with you. So uh, anyway, he also talked about uh, becoming a monthly challenge partner. On the table back there, you, you'll see one of these cards along with an envelope, and you can feel free to take one with you, and pray and see what the Lord, maybe the Lord may have you help us. But anyway, there's also uh, other information on the table that you can help you help yourself to, and uh, we also have. I, I we neglected to show you. We have some beautiful wooden crosses that are um, uh, that are hand, that are uh, uh, put together. Uh, actually, uh, handcrafted, not just put together, but handcrafted by students of Teen Challenge, and so uh, you'll see them on the table. Anything that you purchase on the table will go directly to help support our uh, center. So anyway, just wanted to share that with you. And uh, we're, we're going to go on singing, uh, you know, a uh, song, and then we'll have another testimony. And so anyway, here it is, Chris. Go ahead.
as I said before, I'm from New York City. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. A person like me never imagined being in a place like Teen Challenge. I'm actually 52 years old. Uh, my life started off really good. My father was an entertainer. He sung in a group called The Platters from 1956 to 1976. Uh, we lived in hotels most of the time that I was a young man. Uh, I went to school, I went to high school, I graduated, I went to college, I graduated with a degree in psychology. Uh, sometime after my graduation from college, I got a job at Pace University in New York, and I actually worked there for 17 years. It seemed like my problem, my life was, I never had any problems. And, and then uh, my son was killed in a car accident in 1997. And uh, from the time that tragedy happened, I began drinking alcohol. Uh, I guess I can tell you that the spiral that my life went down was really fast. Uh, instead of going to God and praying about it, instead I went to the bar and I literally never came out of it. Uh, after the accident, I just, I couldn't go back to work. So I, uh, I drank a lot practically every day. Uh, I had never had a tragedy in my life such as that. And uh, if anyone has ever lost anyone, parent, child, brother, sister, you know that loss really affects us in a way that can be sometimes detrimental to us. Uh, and also I believe myself that um, your kids should go before you. Uh, my parents are already deceased now, by the time when my son was killed in a car accident. And uh, I really didn't have anyone to go to. So instead of going to God, I went to the bottle, uh, which was a huge mistake. Uh, shortly after his death, I moved to the state of Pennsylvania in my alcoholism. And uh, it didn't really get better for me. I moved to a city called Reading, which is probably the worst decision I ever made in my life. Uh, the street that I lived on in Reading, literally had a bar in every other corner. If anyone knows Reading, it's called Cotton Street. And my life became the Cotton Street run every day, going to one bar to the next, to the next, to the next. Um, as a result, I wound up in jail a couple of times and uh, had some doubts with drug abuse. Well, suffice to say that now, you know, I, uh, like I said, I never imagined that after the good part of my life that I would have a bad part of it. Um, but something I know for sure is that God restores us to our natural selves in Christ Jesus, and, and that's what that has happened to me. Uh, I got, I was fortunate to find a place like Teen Challenge, and I really didn't want to go because of the name itself, Teen Challenge. I wasn't even a teen, so it was like, what am I going to do, sit around a bunch of young kids? You know, but when I actually got there, I saw that there were grown men just like myself who had issues in their lives and were trying to do something better. And uh, they, didn't, they weren't just trying to do something better on their own. They looked to Christ to do that. So by the grace of God, you know, I was literally saved in the Teen Challenge Chapel. So now he's in my heart. And I didn't go to church as a, as a child. I mean, my, my father traveled the whole world and took us with him just dragging us along. But, you know, I got some good experiences out of that, but never uh, a good experience as much as I had in Jesus. Uh, I have currently five children right now, four daughters and a son. And uh, I, go out, I go out on passes. I committed to the long-term program so that my children can see that when you start something, you can finish it and still do what you need to do as long as you keep God in your lives. And uh, they come up on passes every month when you go out and do stuff. I'm looking forward to getting home. I'm two months from graduation, and I never really thought that I'd finish. Uh, teen Challenge is not, it's really not a place you want to be. But again, by the grace of God, I found him there. So I owe debt to Teen Challenge for helping me out, getting my life straight. Uh, because my father was a singer when I was very young, I actually did sing too. He never wanted me, he always wanted me to sing when, like, Friends came over, I'll sing a song for him, you know, and I never wanted to do it. And even to the time that he just went up to heaven to God, I never had done it. 
But so now, I, it's my hope and grace, you know, feeling that he's looking down at me now, even though I'm singing with the choir. And he's proud that at least now I'm going to be singing some stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, I want to thank you guys for letting us be here today. It's really a blessing to us. Uh, fortunately for me, I got to meet Brother Bob here. <laughs> and we uh, sing together. So he's talking a lot of stuff about ministry and singing and what it, what it means to people to share our experiences and hopes in our walk with God. So I'm proud and I appreciate it for that. You guys have a great day. Enjoy the rest of our show. Don, that there, uh, I mean, all these, all these stories are amazing. If, if <coughs> one of her Jasons, it's amazing. Mike's, uh, you know, sometimes they, they say things that I've never, that, that they, that they've never said, you know, and I, I just, you know, I'm uh, just blown away. And I hear this, their stories all the time because we travel every weekend, and um, there's some things that Don had not even told you. But would you mind if I say, oh, Don, when he was. How old, how old were you when that took place? Uh, what, yeah, why don't you tell him? Because okay, I think it's amazing. Yeah. You know, God is really good. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back in 2009, while at work one day, I was bending down to a, uh, a file cabinet at my job, and I passed out. And uh, I went to the hospital and was found to have a four centimeter tumor in my head. Uh, so I, if anyone knows anything about tumors, the first thing I thought was, you know, I'll go to the doctor, I need some chemotherapy, and uh, it'll reduce it or however. But when I actually went to the doctor and got the MRI, they said that uh, I need surgery right away. So I was beyond the point of getting chemotherapy. But unfortunately for me, it was an acoustic neuroma, which was non cancerous. And it was attached to my eye, my ear, and my face. So my face is partially paralyzed, my eye doesn't blink, uh, I have no hearing on my left side, but I can still sing notes. Amen? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, I had two separate brain surgeries. And again, by God's grace, I'm still here yes. talking to you guys at your church. Yes. So yeah, God is really good. And uh, I mean, that's not something you normally go tell folks about, but it just lets you know that God does perform miracles in people's lives. And I'm definitely uh, a true version of that as I stand here. Amen? Thank you. about Don uh, musically is uh, one time I had a, a uh, young man in the choir, well, his daughter was, he was, I don't know how young he was, but anyway, he, uh, he couldn't hear on, with one ear, and, and uh, he slammed, when he sang with the choir, he, 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 sang, he sang flat all the time, if you know what that means, he was off key all the time, but you know, I didn't have the heart to, <laughs> I mean, he, he could sing, but he just sang flat. And so when Don uh, said that he couldn't hear on one side, I wondered about that. Don never sings flat. He's always right on, right on key. Right on key. And I think that's amazing. <laughs> you know? And uh, anyway, Chris, we're going to close the, uh, with thank you for giving to the Lord. That's what we're going to sing now. I know you're going to be able to uh, give a free will offering. And uh, we just, and without uh, gifts of church people, teen challenges all over the country, and, Really, there, you know, all over the world, there are about a thousand Teen Challenge Ministries all over the world. But they could not stay going without gifts of church people. And so we just want to sing this song, thank you, uh, from the bottom of our hearts. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you uh, very much for those wonderful testimonies and, and the songs that you provide and, and for the ministry that you provide. And once again, I uh, want to let the church know that we have uh, a free will offering out there to support the ministry. We want to continue to uh, support this uh, important ministry. Uh, we invite all of you uh, to stay for uh, refreshments and... and uh, finger food or whatever we have out there. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's good. Um, we're going to have a, a prayer. The benediction will be a prayer and also a prayer for the meal and the fellowship afterwards. So uh, following benediction, I'll just ask all the men to uh, go with me in the back and then everybody can greet them and we can uh, have our uh, refreshments. So. Let's, uh, let's bow our heads for our benediction. Father, we thank you for uh, this wonderful opportunity to be here this morning in your house of worship. And Lord, we're just amazed about what you're able to do uh, through these men's lives, Lord, the testimonies that they have, Lord. And we just thank you for um, the ministry of Teen Challenge and for what they do, Lord. We, we know, Lord, that you have led uh, this ministry 
we pray, Lord, for um, continual um, men and women to uh, be a part of this ministry, Lord. Um, we pray that we as a church will uh, support this important ministry. And we pray now that you would uh, bless our fellowship together as we fellowship with one another. We thank you for uh, the food um, that's prepared, Lord. Uh, we pray that you uh, bless the food that we, we, we partake, Lord, that it would uh, give us strength and nourishment, Lord, to, to do your will. And we pray that you be with us and lead us in, until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, before we leave, I just want to give you um, an advertisement for next Sunday. Next Sunday, I'm kind of preaching along these lines of, of what we heard this morning, how Jesus Christ is, is our peace, and he breaks down the walls and the barriers that, that we put up. And so that will be next Sunday. We, we invite you to uh, come and worship. Um, you're dismissed.